Are you pulling your hair trying to find how to make elements or sections and columns clickable? I don't. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the digital alchemist. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a simple way to make any column or section clickable within Elementor. Now, before you ask, yes, we will be using a plugin for that. And while I totally understand that we all try to reduce the number of plugins to a minimum, well, sometimes it's actually more practical to use one, especially if your specific project requires it. So if you're not scared by one more plugin, let me show you. So first of all, let's take a look at the demo. As you can see, when I hover over the columns and intersections, first of all, I see there's a overlay change, change in color. And then also I can click on any column or intersection and it links me to another page. And if I go back and I can click on any other section, exactly the same. Okay, so in the WordPress admin dashboard, the first thing you want to do is go to plugins, add new. And we're going to add a plugin called Elementor add-on elements. So basically all you have to do is look for it in the search engine in the top right corner. And then you will need to click on install and then click a second time on activate. Now I've already done it. So the next thing you want to do is go in the left panel to the Elementor add-ons elements settings. So click on the first item in the navigation and you will end here. And by default, everything will be activated. So I just deactivated everything except from the wrapper link, which is what you want to keep for this to work. So click on save changes. Okay. So next let's move on to the page that we want to edit. And in my case, it's the home page. So as you can see, when I hover over this column here, nothing happens. And of course we want to change that because we want to make this column clickable. So click on edit with Elementor. Okay. And once inside Elementor, we can start doing what we came here to do. So first of all, I'm going to open the navigator and I use command plus I on the Mac. And I guess it's control plus I on um, a Windows or Linux PC, or you can click on the navigator icon here. So I'm just going to drag this on the left hand side. Now, this is quite a complex layout. And of course, feel free to try this with a way simpler layout. But I just wanted to show you that you can do this at pretty much any level. So I get four columns here. So this is column number one, then I got column two, column three and column four. This is what you see here in the navigator. Now, we're not going to care about column one, but column two, which is this one here, has two intersections, intersection A, intersection B. And if I open it in the navigator, you can see it reflected here. So A and B. And then within uh, the intersections, I have a column. Now, of course, this is not the best practice, um, but this is quite a complex layout. So unless you want to do it with code, this is the way to do it if you want such a complex layout. Now, uh, it also helps me to show you that it works at every level. So first of all, I could select column two and then move on to the style tab. And here I have an option called EAE wrapper link, which is what we just installed. I can enable and then I can add any link I want. Okay. I can also do it at the intersection level. So this is intersection A and I could do the same at this level. So by default, I would land on the layout tab then you would click on the style tab. And once again, you can enable the link and just add the link the way you usually do uh, within Elementor. And you can do it also at this level. So this is a column within the intersection. Move on to the style tab. You can enable the link and add any link. We'll do that in a moment. But first of all, I want to add the uh, background overlay. Now you don't have to do that, but it gives a visual clue to the person browsing the web that, oh, there's some interaction with this column here. So let me show you. So first of all, still uh, within the style tab, I'm going to click on background classic, and I'm not going to do anything here, but I need to click on classic because if I don't, as you can see, there's only the background tab. And once I click on classic, now we have a new tab called background overlay, which is actually what we want for this to work. So I'm just going to close background, open background overlay, click on classic. And I'm first going to make sure that the regular state is completely transparent. So I'm just going to move the transparency slider all the way to the left. And then I click on the hover tab 
click on classic and I'm going to add a color. Now I have a saved color. So now when I hover over intersection A column, uh, I mean the column within the inner uh, section A, you can see we now have this visual clue. Okay, so now the last thing left to do is to actually link uh, to a page. So I'm just going to link to the link page, click on update. And now if I refresh, so if I hover over the column, now you can see that we have a visual clue that we can interact with this column. And if I click, there you go, to the link page. So that was short and sweet, and I hope you got value out of this video. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up as it really, really, really helps growing this channel. And talking about that, if you want more of this type of videos and you're not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Oh, and by the way, if you want to create a beautiful brand identity for yourself or for your clients, I got a brand identity guidelines template that you can download on my website for free. Initially, it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to casino.com forward slash branding. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. And in the meantime, you know what I'm about to say. It's time to invest in your success.